This is a book bull summary of the book Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits by Philip A. Fisher. While the stock market can be volatile and fluctuate from year to year, there are certain principles of investment theory that have remained constant over time. This book outlines the key qualities that investors should consider when evaluating a company to invest in, and it can help investors determine their risk tolerance and investment strategy. Like a detective, a successful investor thoroughly researches and gathers all relevant information before making an investment decision. Number 1. Smart investment strategies focus on companies with long-term growth potential. The common perception of investing is that it's characterized by rapid buying and selling and focuses on quick profits. But smart investing requires careful consideration and long-term planning. It's not about seeking quick profits, but rather finding companies with growth potential that can multiply an initial investment over time. Identifying and investing in companies with this type of growth potential can be hard because many stocks are either over or undervalued. Smart investors look for undervalued companies with growth potential because they have the potential to rapidly increase the investor's initial investment when the time is right. Luckily, companies with growth potential can be recognized by their common characteristics. Companies with growth potential offer products and services that can sustain high sales volume. They invest in research and development in order to continue growing over time, even when their current product lines no longer offer growth opportunities. Companies with high growth potential have solid management teams and good employee relations. Number 2. Do your homework. Research a potential company from every angle you can before you invest. Successful investing is similar to the work of a detective. It requires thorough research and analysis of all available data to be effective. When considering a company's investment potential, you'll want to collect detailed information about the company from every possible angle. To do this, you can employ the scuttlebutt method, that is, digging for information from every possible source. This can be done by contacting vendors, customers, former employees, and research scientists or executives in trade associations. Contacting a few of the company's competitors could also yield surprisingly accurate and detailed information. Once you've developed a profile of the company, it's time to contact company management directly to ask them informed questions. The scuttlebutt method is accurate yet time-consuming. To avoid wasting time, choose the companies you want to research carefully. This will require you to pre-select companies that could offer the kind of growth potential you want for your investment. Start by gathering information from your friends or other investors looking at printed materials like newspapers, and considering which company seems promising. You should avoid companies with negative news or questionable dealings. Number 3. Look for dips in a stock's price to get in cheaply, to ride high when the company grows. As mentioned earlier, stocks are often over or undervalued. Once you've identified a company with good long-term growth potential, how can you ensure you obtain the greatest value for your money? Stock prices reflect the current perceived value of a stock by the financial community and can create a cycle of rising and falling prices. For instance, if the community values a stock too high, this can lead to a rush of buying and a rise in the stock price, potentially creating a price bubble. Also, suppose a successful company encounters an unexpected expense. In that case, this can cause the investment community to downgrade future projections for the company, which results in a decrease in the stock price of the company. This simple realization about the stock market's irrationality can help you earn extraordinary profits. Companies with the potential to grow are often innovators, and they'll inevitably run into bumps along the road. Consequently, the financial community will undervalue the stocks of these companies. To illustrate this, imagine you've found a widget manufacturing company with a huge growth potential. At first, the hype surrounding the company causes the stock price to rise. However, the company encountered a problem with the casting mold, and the widget was improperly sized. Now everyone thinks the product is a flop, and the stock price falls. This presents the perfect time for you to buy in cheaply and profit when the company fixes its problems. Number 4. Be confident in your choices. Don't give in to doubt or follow the investor herd mentality. Doubt is naturally inevitable. As an investor, it's normal to feel uncertain when deciding to buy a stock. You'll feel the pangs of doubt that cause you to hesitate. However, Successful investors don't let doubt hold them back. Instead, they act when they've identified a company with profit potential. If you truly believe a company has potential, then take a deep breath and buy. Resist the urge to let a stock's price fall further to get a better deal. By doing so, you might miss a golden opportunity. Once you've found a good investment, it's generally a good idea to hold on to it. From a business perspective, there are only three valid reasons to sell a stock. These include, one, you misjudge the company's growth potential. 
Two, your judgment was sound, but the company's conditions changed. And three, if you're temporarily holding a middling stock while searching for a better investment opportunity. Any other reasons, such as making money quickly or following the crowd, can only harm you. It's important to remember that a company with great growth potential can never be overvalued. If you're learning something new in this video, take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Number 5. Conservative investors should seek out solid, organized companies with growth potential. We've previously discussed how to benefit from investing in high growth companies. However, some investors prefer a more moderate profit strategy with gradual but consistent growth. As a conservative investor, you want a strong company that still has the potential to grow. If you're trying to play it safe, you should invest in startups, no matter how promising they appear. Rather, keep your eye out for large, established companies with a proven track record of profitability. A company that is both strong and able to grow demonstrates these four major characteristics. First, the company's production methods are low cost, such that it can continue earning profits even when prices rise, through inflationary periods or market crashes. Second, the company is well organized and effective in its market, meaning it can deliver its products and services. Third, the company has an outstanding track record in research and technical development, allowing it to continue innovating and improving upon its products and services. Finally, the company needs to demonstrate financial know-how. It must be capable of allocating resources only to initiatives with profit potential and have a good eye for warning signs that indicate it's time to move on. Number six, valued employees form the core of any stable, growth-oriented company and are good investments. If you're a conservative investor, it's also important to examine a company's employee base and learn more about how it treats them. There are two main reasons for this strategy. First, a company's growth potential depends entirely on employees who work towards a company's strategy. Second, how a company treats its staff can help you figure out how productive and effective that company is. By looking at a company's human resource and management policies, you can get a better idea of how a company is run and better judge its long-term potential. For instance, look at the way the company handles promotions. Suppose they rarely promote from within and prefer to hire from outside the company. In that case, this strongly indicates that the company isn't grooming employees or developing potential through training. This is a red flag that the company does not handle its human resources wisely, and is therefore not the kind of company in which you'd want to invest. The same applies to management's ability to work together as a team. Look for a company that forms well-organized teams and for managers who can effectively delegate responsibility. Number seven, a conservative investor looks for companies that can ensure profitability over the long term. When evaluating a company, a conservative investor should look into the future. Not only must the company be strong today, but it also must have the means to protect its position over time. When making this evaluation, an investor should view a company's profitability not as a sum of its returns, but rather in terms of the size of its profit margins. You want to find a company that will be profitable in the long term, one that will continue growing even during challenging economic times. But how can a business ensure long-term profits? This can be achieved by being better than the competition. A company's long-term profitability hinges upon its ability to do or create something that competitors can't, lest the competition steals its market share. One way to ensure market dominance is through scale. In other words, a larger producer can produce more than a small competitor, and often at a lower cost. Another way to ensure a company's market position is by creating technical developments that can't be legally copied by other companies due to patents or copyright. You want to be sure that a company's strategy takes into account and is prepared for the long-term development of the business. Number eight, calculate a company's price earnings ratio to determine whether you're paying the real price. A company can be incorrectly valued based on the whims of the investment crowd. Indeed, a company can be worth more for a risky investor than for a conservative one. A risky investor might value a stock higher if a company is expected to grow rapidly. But this fact does not help the conservative investor. A conservative investor shouldn't pay in terms of expectation. Instead, a conservative investor pays the real price of a stock. Essentially, the conservative investor is looking for stable, growing companies that are either currently undervalued or priced at their real value. One way to determine this is by using the price earnings ratio. To do so, simply take a company's stock price and divide it by the company's earnings per share. However, higher earnings represent positive projections, which could cause a huge spike in the stock price. Then, it's up to the conservative investor to decide whether the company's characteristics justify the market's belief that the company will continue growing beyond its current share value. We hope this video provided valuable insights and information for you. Where do you invest your money? Companies with growth potential or established companies? 
let us know in the comments section. And if you learned something new in this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Thank you and until next time.